Hello. Today's episode is courtesy of Andrew off of Patreon, who asked a question. Um, what he wanted to see were videos that explored melody and particularly melody progression in Eurorack. He said, I've got a beat step, the older version, not the beat step pro. Um, and whilst I understand the idea of um, sending pitches around, um, you know, using mults, I'm interested in Maybe are there other ways that I can send pitch around in my system? Are there other ways to create a melodic progression in modular? Um, you know, and are there any modules that you would recommend to do that with? Um, and the answer is yes, there are. <laughs> so, um, there are things that you can do in order to send uh, voltages around in very interesting ways. Um, and so let's talk about them. And also some other sequencing techniques which sort of use dumb elements, like really simple things like LFOs and mixers, um, in order to create longer sequences. Now, Andrew asked, is there any one thing that I could look at, maybe? Some way of sending things around? And it's like he was basically saying, should I buy a sequential switch? Um, and the answer is, you should just buy a sequential switch. Um, because there's loads of interesting things you can do. Um, so, what the fuck is a sequential switch? So a sequential switch is like the kind of um, a junction at a railway uh, where trains come in and you can click a little button and change the tracks and send the trains off in different directions depending on where you've clicked the switch appropriately enough. And it's basically got five inputs or outputs because they can be used either way. And you have a single one here and then you have four that switch so it's basically a way of remapping that input or output with these four inputs or outputs and cycling that mapping using a trigger. Let me, let me just show you it. It'll be easier. So this very first example um, will be a classic example of why a sequential switch is useful. And it's a classic example with the pressure points because um, you pair a sequential switch with the pressure points because it's only got four um, stages, but you do have all of these outputs. Now, what the sequential switch allows you to do is to basically send the top row and then the bottom row um, and then flip-flop between the two. It flip-flops between its inputs or outputs, depending on how you want to do it. So you can either send one source, flip-flop to four outputs, so four different places. So now I'm sending out a voltage there, now I'm sending it there, now I'm sending it there, now I'm sending it there. Or the reverse, now I'm taking voltages from loads of different places and I'm sending them to one place. And in this instance, that one place is a quantizer and then to my um, oscillator so that I can create a longer passage. Um, and so let me show you. So can you see that there's a little light on and the gray cable corresponds to this middle row? So what the, the sequential switch is doing is it's, it's listening to this input and it's pinging it through, through uh, to my oscillator. Great and all. Now, what if I took the BeatStep Pro just to illustrate and um, I send a gate into this? Oh. So what it's doing is just literally remapping um, what's coming in to what's going out. And it's awesome with the pressure points because you can create this kind of call and response thing where you have four notes here, four notes there, and actually you've got your third row at the bottom and you've got the spare input for something else. Um, so instead of me doing that manually, let's clock the process. Um, and if I take my master clock, like I'm doing, and feed it to a clock divider, in this instance, the NoBots divide, and I take um, the eighth output, eighth division, then it will do that flip-flopping for us. See? So it's a good example of the sequential switch allowing us to create longer passages 
and sort of, you know, unlock a more useful application of that second row in pressure points, if that makes sense. Here's another example of the sequential switch in action. Uh, and instead of our um, second lane of pressure points, let's use a random voltage as our second thing to flip-flop. So I'm using a clock divider, by the way, to choose when it makes its flip-flop. And here's the output of the um, music thing Turing machine, which is also clocked. And the Turing machine is a random voltage generator. So let's put that in. So you see here, da, 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 da. that's our voltages on this row. And then this is a little source of inspiration from the Turing machine, which it flip flops between. So here's a way of doing kind of progressive melodies um, where you break apart the choosing of a note with the triggering of the note. Um, and what I mean is in literally, I do it with two gates, it's super simple. So it's just a gate which is here on the BeatStep Pro, which is actually firing a maths when the maths is telling the Acme's castle to open up and play its um, note. And then the second gate is going to a pressure points and the pressure points um, clock that is, and I've got four tuned notes and those are going via a pitch quantizer to the Acme's castle. So one lane of gate sequencing is controlling the maths to fire it and the other is advancing the pressure points. So advance, advance, advance. And of course we can stab a few different notes while we're at that stage and you can sort of make your own kind of metropolis um, pulse count repeater um, just in the way that you sequence these two gates. So. Look here. So that's my gate. And then this one is just a single note which advances the pressure points. So with just a four note sequencer, I'm able to make a longer passage by stretching out the whole process and repeating gates for as long as I want until I decide it's time to advance. Maybe it isn't time to advance and I can then do it manually. Here's a remix.
Okay. Let's extend this idea of having um, multiple LFOs splitting apart our sequence so that we can control and extend um, changes in, in pitch over time um, and go beyond what like one simple little sequence could do by splitting apart the elements. Um, so in this, um, I'm now using the Octo Controller to do my gates and to advance my pressure points. Do you see that this is the middle channel that's advancing pressure points? But I have a third channel, which is just another square wave LFO, and that's feeding into a mixer. And that the other channel of the mixer is actually the output of the pressure points as well. Um, so I'm going to blend just a hard square wave with the output of this, so I can create octave shifts within this sequence by just literally mixing. So a mixer can let us create octave shifts in a sequence. So this is this blended in. Ooh. Interesting. Nice. So just to reiterate, the elements that make this possible are just a dumb analog sequencer that we can clock and some related LFOs. So this very slow square wave LFO is causing this overall shift. So with these three LFOs, we can create very long shifting patterns with just a mixer and a quantizer as well. So, this idea of using an LFO which kind of stair steps um, and creates octave, periodic octave shifts over time um, is not a new concept and it's something that I've, you know, I've used in built-in sequences like the Metropolis which has an AUX input um, and I love doing that, I often using pressure points to AUX transpose um, the sequencer. Um, but it is interesting this idea that you can blend signals so if you don't have an AUX input then you can create that. And that idea can be extended. And I think probably the natural kind of end game is what this guy Stevio does with his modular. And you may have seen Stevio. He's a um, guy with dreads who plays with a fuck off Eurorack system and a, like a Voyager rack um, and can play for hours playing this like wicked, super funky, interesting, jazzy, sort of housey techno. I tried to understand his sequencing system because he's been ridiculously open about it. Um, I wrote to him and he's been really nice and he's written loads of stuff to me about how he does it. And I am still in the process of unpacking it because there's a, it, it, it is very idiosyncratic. He's developed a really clever system for doing it. However, I can impart some of what it is in principle. And it's basically just an extension of what we were doing with, you know, using a square wave um, to kind of transpose. Right, this rather convoluted selection of modules is the extension of the whole LFO octave shifting trick. What we're doing is we're taking sequences, multiple sequences that we can run at different rates, and we're just going to mix them together, and we're going to create one output, which is this cumulative combination of all of them working together. I'm actually generating the sequences with the Z8000, which is kind of like the pressure points in that it's got rows, 
but I've got multiple rows. And I, the key here is that I can clock them at different rates. So you can imagine if you had a slow four note passage down here, and then you added a fast um, passage on top, you'd end up with this kind of fast um, sort of melody that would shift up and down you, with this. Um, and it, what it does is it's just creating a sequencer from its bare bones. Instead of putting in every note that we want to do, we're putting in the sort of kind of root notes and we're allowing chants and clocks from the trigger riot to shift them around. And we're combining them with a precision adder. Now, the precision adder is awesome for this because it's, it's a lot easier to use than a mixer is. And what the precision adder does is here you can see along the side I have four inputs and I've got four outputs. So this is just a mixer, as in it will add in the voltage that's coming in from there to the outputs. And then if I minus, it will subtract the voltages. So it's a way of combining voltages um, in a really sort of um, standardized way. The beauty of this thing is it's very accurate with its summing. So when you do combine them, you just get the combination of voltages. You don't get any offset, any slight drops, anything weird like that. You just get the combination of the voltages. So for this technique, it's awesome. But actually for any technique where you want to take one melodic line and you want to sort of blend something else in periodically um, and generate more complexity. So what we were doing with the LFO, you'd be much better off with a precision adder. Um, and then this top one, by the way, you actually have got an, a level so you can dial that back. With all the others, they're just hard on, off. Um, the other thing you can do, just for the sake of completeness, is that if you have nothing plugged into a channel, and you do that, it will create an octave shift. It will put in one volt um, and then minus one volt. So you can use this as an octave shifter as well. So rather good, we like. What I'll do is I'll run the sequence. And in my trigger riot, you can see that this output is generating that clock and it's advancing the sequencer. And down here, this little piggy is the gate output, which is gating my melody. This is actually running off to loads of oscillators to create the sound. But we're more interested in the melody. So by hitting plus, I was adding in the voltages from this row. I can take them out so I can start to perform the addition and subtraction. Now I have a second row. This isn't running anything, I'm just using it for octave shift, effectively. So now, these two rows are being added together. And what I run these rows at will change the melody. Still working on the best way to tune these oscillators and tune the sequences, make it all work in a musical and instant fashion.